It should be painfully obvious for anyone with just an ounce of awareness that socialists have infested our society and are doing everything they can to destroy our republic so as to bring about their fantasy land utopia. Their plan? Dismantle the foundation of our society, the nuclear family. They almost succeeded, but recent events prove the tide is turning and we're heading back to reality. Rosie the Riveter here, dropping more truth bombs to destroy fake news and propaganda. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to get new videos when they are uploaded. Now let's get into today's riveting topic. In a recent commencement speech, Kansas City Chiefs kicker Harrison Butker in essence told the graduating class of Benedictine College that while women can be successful in their careers, the majority of them find their excitement and happiness in their God-given purpose of being a wife and mother. For the ladies present today, congratulations on an amazing accomplishment. You should be proud of all that you have achieved to this point in your young lives. I want to speak directly to you briefly because I think it is you, the women, who have had the most diabolical lies told to you. How many of you are sitting here now about to cross this stage and are thinking about all the promotions and titles you are going to get in your career. Some of you may go on to lead successful careers in the world, but I would venture to guess that the majority of you are most excited about your marriage and the children you will bring into this world. I can tell you that my beautiful wife, Isabel, would be the first to say that her life truly started when she began living her vocation as a wife and as a mother. Sections throughout both the Old and New Testaments address roles for husbands and wives which Marxists like to cherry-pick, purposely distorting and perverting God's definitions and meanings so as to try to discredit the Bible. As luck would have it, we've been reviewing one such passage in 1 Peter in our Sunday Bible study. It is just one of many that supports Butker's beliefs, and it is one the left completely misrepresents, leading to their meltdown of his speech. In the Apostles' letter to discouraged Christians being persecuted for their faith, Peter discusses how believing husbands and wives should conduct themselves in a Christ-like manner in their roles towards each other, especially when their spouse is a non-believer, in order to bring them to faith. In it, Peter instructs wives to submit to their husbands. But what does he really mean here? A better translation is to be humble and serving, the total opposite of the way feminists believe they should behave. Regardless, this term sends people, both non-believers and some believers, into a tailspin because they have abandoned God's plan. The truth is, God's purpose for marriage is not a master-slave relationship. It is a complementary one. God specifically made males and females to have different traits and different functions so they can work together to build a family each fulfilling their own roles to move the relationship and family forward, not bog it down with arguments over who's in charge and demands for equality. What feminists conveniently ignore is Peter's instructions for husbands to love and respect their wives. They have no idea the relationship they are looking for is already commanded by God himself. God makes clear. A husband's role is that of a service-filled leadership, not a domineering dictatorship. However, progressive Marxist ideology under the guise of feminism perverted that too. To the gentlemen here today, part of what plagues our society is this lie that has been told to you that men are not necessary in the home or in our communities. As men, we set the tone of the culture, and when that is absent, disorder, dysfunction, and chaos set in. This absence of men in the home is what plays a large role in the violence we see all around the nation. Other countries do not have nearly the same absentee father rates as we find here in the U.S., and a correlation could be made in their drastically lower violence rates as well. Be unapologetic in your masculinity, fighting against the cultural emasculation of men. Do hard things. Never settle for what is easy. You might have a talent that you don't necessarily enjoy, but if it glorifies God, Maybe you should lean into that over something that you might think suits you better. Society has discarded the servanthood aspect, especially for men. In fact, 
feminists degrade and humiliate men who try to serve them or show them respect. I'm sure every woman listening to my voice right now can open her own door and pull out of her own chair. But having a man do it is not about weakness or inability. It's about respect. This is a way a man can show a woman reverence, show her that he appreciates her and treat her with high esteem and admiration, as God instructed. But feminism started telling our men, I don't need you. I don't need your acts of kindness. I don't need you to pay for my meals. and I don't need you to court and marry me. Just take me home for a night like a common prostitute and move on. Throughout the Bible, Christ is compared to the groom, and his bride is the church, which he sanctified and purified with his own precious blood. Understanding that context brings such a rich meaning to these and other passages on marriage, as we know God would not want the husband, who also represents Christ, to do anything to harm, demean, or disrespect his wife, who also represents the church. As for the wife, God only asks for fidelity, love, honor, and humility, following his directions as he only wants the best for his bride. Biblical love is defined for us as the highest form of love in 1 John 4. In this is love, that God had warm, fuzzy feelings. Nope. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and here's how he demonstrated it, by giving his son as a propitiation for sinners. In other words, love is doing what is best for somebody despite how I feel. My parents demonstrated this love and were tremendous role models for a happy marriage. We often tease my mom that she never left the 1950s. And because of that, I am eternally grateful as she was an amazing mother and housewife. My father had nothing but the utmost respect for her, and she had nothing but love and admiration for him, happily serving him for 58 years until the day he died. In reality, feminists thoughtlessly walked away from the most respectable role a woman could have to practice free love and accept uncommitted relationships. They were unwittingly tricked into demanding respect while becoming fundamentally unrespectable. We traded humility for narcissism, and we've been destroying ourselves ever since. My husband and I have been married going on 32 years. We've experienced the highs, and we've survived the lows. It's true. We've had those fleeting thoughts about calling it quits and walking out the door, including once after a huge fight about installing a ceiling fan. However, when we pledged for better, for worse, in front of God, we meant it. Um, so what I like to say is that, is that, you know, a soulmate is not someone, you make your soulmate through marriage. Uh, you, it's, it's, in, it's in the act of saying, I do, that you're choosing, you're selecting them and saying to them, you are my soulmate because I chose you. Right. Uh, you are the one because I chose you. It's not, I didn't choose you because you're the one, you're the one because I chose you. Therefore, we put in the work every day to make a successful marriage. Over the years, we've learned that it's the little things that make huge differences. Uh, thank you for doing the dishes or making dinner, an occasional text or flirtatious gift saying, I miss you, or even a gentle touch or hug as we pass each other in the hall. Divorce lawyer James Sexton discussed this in a recent interview with Daily Wire's Matt Walsh. This isn't about what you owe each other. This is about what gives this other person joy and inspires the best in them and, and vice versa and how can we do that? Because that same cycle of misery that people experience that lands in my office, which is, you know, like, well, why should we, why should I sleep with him? He wasn't, a, he was working all the time this week. Well, why, you know, she's like, why should I, you know, want to come home when I come home? All she does is complains to me. Well, that cycle of misery, it can also go the other way. Like, just be kind to your spouse. Be you know, be sweet to your spouse, be sensual to your spouse, all these lovely things that you were to each other when you were dating, when it wasn't like locked in and now, well, this is my person, I don't have to tend to this anymore. What if it's just pay attention, just be kind to this person, treat them with love, like treat them, treat them like you're cheering for them, you know? What if it's that simple? Like what does it really cost to praise me when I open the pickle jar? What does it cost to tell your spouse they're beautiful? 
or that they're funny or that they're smart or that they're a great mom or that whatever, that just that you're happy that you picked them, that you'd still pick them. You know, if you were still in a room with a bunch of people, they're still the one you'd pick. Like what, what does it cost? Nothing, it costs nothing. I mean, Seriously, how hard is it to show a little act of kindness or complete a task for your spouse? Apparently for feminists, pretty hard. A few weeks ago, I said I don't do my husband's laundry, and a lot of people are saying, whoa, 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 those are small acts of kindness. Why wouldn't you want to do that for your partner? But here's the thing. Small acts of kindness that are mostly domestic labor just add up to work at the end of the day. So here's a list of things that I don't do for my husband. You all know I don't do his laundry. He can do that himself. I do my laundry, and we do the kids' laundry, but he does his own. I don't cook dinner. He cooks dinner every single night. I do breakfast and lunch for us and our kids. I don't pack him a lunch. If he's hungry, he'll figure out what he's gonna eat for lunch the same way that I do. I don't make his doctor's appointments because guess what? He's not making mine. Would it be kind of me to do that? For sure, is it my job? Absolutely not. I want him to be healthy, but he's a grown ass man and he can book his own appointments, right? There's can you imagine if a man had said that? I actually feel sorry for this woman as she has bought into the feminist self-centered ideology. I have no problem doing so-called domestic tasks for my husband, like making a doctor's appointment, just as he has no issue scheduling maintenance on my car, so I don't have to. It's called marriage, lady. Interestingly enough, if the left would have just kept their mouths shut over Harrison Butler's commencement speech, his remarks would have been limited to the graduation attendees and some online views. But thanks to the unhinged, agenda-driven cancel culture of the left, Good discussions about marriage, motherhood, and Marxism are happening. And Marxism is not faring so well. I think deep down, they know Butker is 100% correct. When we got married, my husband and I did not want children. Ever. I guess we also bought into the left malarkey that we didn't need to have any. That being said, I was never driven by a career either. I did know if I were to get pregnant, I would want to quit my job and raise my child. We just had convinced ourselves we really didn't want the responsibility. However, with each birthday that went by, I questioned our decision more and more, leading to the only major contentious issue in our marriage. Then, at age 40, resolved it was never going to happen, my husband turned to me on the way home from a trip and said it hit him that maybe his own desire to not have children prevented me from something I really wanted, to be a mom. God works in wonderfully mysterious ways because as we had a conversation about whether to start trying, we did not know I was already four weeks pregnant. The left had turned the term homemaker into a derogatory one. So let's label mothers more accurately, CEOs. Let this sink in. Women who demand husbands respect their wives melted down because Butker gave his wife credit for his success and confessed his admiration for her as a wife and a homemaker. I'm on this stage today and able to be the man I am because I have a wife who leans into her vocation. I'm beyond blessed with the many talents God has given me, but it cannot be overstated that all of my success is made possible because a girl I met in band class back in middle school would convert to the faith, become my wife, and embrace one of the most important titles of all, homemaker. I was in the workforce for 20 years as a teacher, a bank teller, a comedy club manager, and an administrative assistant. And honestly, none of those jobs were really satisfying. However, as a housewife and a mom, not only am I still all those things, I'm so much more, including CFO, cook, nurse, cheerleader, advisor, and chauffeur, among others. And it is the most fulfilling job I have ever had. As for my husband, he couldn't be a more proud, involved, encouraging, and doting father. Our daughter is the best gift we've ever been given that we had no idea we truly wanted. While women can have careers as well as be mothers, it is the woman who sees their outside work as just a job and motherhood as their vocation, who
who tend to be the most satisfied. They might be exhausted, stressed, and pulled in a thousand different directions, yet it tends to be these women who find happiness, fulfillment, and true meaning in their lives. Why? Because they stopped living for themselves and started living for their family. I have quite a few friends and family who have fertility issues. Some have spent thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars on treatments to become pregnant. You don't do that for something that isn't extremely important. While many of the wives have had very successful careers, they admit there is something missing, some hole in their lives that exists because they were unable to conceive and have a child. We will never have perfection on this side of heaven, but God gave us guidance in his word on how to try to obtain the best life and relationships we can. Feminism flipped him off and said, no thank you, we're smarter than God, and we can find a better way on our own. Well, how's that working out for you ladies? Like we've made, we've made this idea that is about joining yourself to another person so you can create life and sustain life, and we've made it about me, 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 me. And, and I don't know, how, how do you do that? How do you turn something that's supposed to be so selfless into something that's even more selfish than being alone. People have been convinced the only way to be happy is to have the world in their hands, not recognizing we are our happiest when we realize the world we are looking for is right in our own home. Fortunately, I believe the pendulum is swinging that way as support for people like Butker explodes for saying what so many of us believe. But the Marxist movement isn't done yet. Feminists, who claimed to carry the banner for women's power, spent decades brainwashing women into not desiring to do what they are designed to do, be a wife and mother. Instead, they should put all their energy and focus into a career. Then on a dime, these same feminists move to the back of the bus, giving up their seat for men who claim to be women, insisting women should not feel entitled in the workplace locker rooms, or playing fields. Any woman who pushes back because she doesn't want to change in front of these men are shamed. Those who don't want to compete against biological men are belittled, and the woman who put everything into her career, as they were told to do, now being silenced when they are overlooked for jobs and promotions in preference for a man in a dress. Um, and we raced, and almost impossibly enough, we tied. So we went the exact same time down to the hundredth of a second um, to touch the wall at the exact same time. But we go behind the awards podium after our race and the NCAA official looks at both Thomas and myself and says, great job, you guys tied. We don't really account for ties in terms of trophies. We only have one. So that trophy goes to Leah. And so I was of course taken aback by this. Um, not because I wanted the tangible trophy. I'm a 12-time All-American, so I have lots of those. Um, but it was the principle of him outright looking at me as if it didn't matter and telling me that Leah got the trophy. I understand we tied. I understand there's one trophy, but why are you adamant on, on Thomas having this trophy? And he was not prepared to answer this. Um, they hadn't been questioned, and when I say they, I mean the NCAA. They hadn't been questioned for anything they had done thus far. Um, so he kind of stumbled on his words and, and said, oh, well, uh, we're just doing this in chronological order, to which I pressed back again. Okay. I said, what are you being chronological about? Because we tied. And if you're referring to our, our names, uh, I'm certain that G comes before T. So what are you being chronological about? To which he didn't have an answer. And he says back, well, um, Leah has to have the trophy for photos. You can pose with this one, but you'll have to give it back. And you go home empty-handed, and Leah takes the trophy home. We can eventually mail you one. So, feminists, step aside for these men pretending to be women. Let them have your jobs, your promotions, your rewards, your scholarships, your dignity, and your respect. You know, submit. If need be, just go back home, but definitely be quiet. And remember... You should still not want to be a mother or a wife. Otherwise, you are a bigoted, simple-minded, transphobic, racist, Christian, nationalist, white supremacist. So, I 
have to ask. In light of that knowledge, who then is really oppressing women? Who is truly putting women in a box? Who is openly continuing to push male domination and the patriarchy? And who is honestly living out the handmaid's tale? As I've said before, the Rosies of World War II were not strong women and role models because they left the house to begin a career. They were strong because they stepped up when called upon, doing the work that needed to be done while continuing to maintain their home, their family, and their womanhood. They were happy to return to their role of wife and mother after the war. If this is not true, then where did the baby boomers come from, America? But here's the reality, folks. This is not a conservative versus progressive argument here. This issue ascends beyond politics. This is without a doubt a spiritual issue. Only Satan hates humanity this much and will do everything he's able to do on this earth to destroy it. Breaking up the nuclear family, convince children to abandon their upbringing and shut their parents and families out, indoctrinate women to happily and eagerly murder their babies in the womb, and normalize assisted suicide for healthy children who may just be experiencing a challenging time in puberty. I'm telling you, patriots, if we want to take back our country, if we want to return to the values and principles that made this country great, it starts in the home. We need to return to the firm foundation of a nuclear family. Marxism has pitted wives against husbands and men against women. We need to stop hating each other, embrace humility over narcissism, and start working to understand, love, and serve each other. I'm Rosie the Riveter, and that's my two cents. But what do you think? Leave your comments down below. If you enjoy my content, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. You can find all my videos and my blog, Liberating Letters, at thefactspaper.com. You can also start your own research on the facts paper by exploring the thousands of links to articles I have, including those noted in my videos. Sharing the truth, fake news propagandists won't. Investigate and discover the truth for yourself. Mm -hmm.